So if you've decided to get an electric car and you're wondering just how it will fit into your life, there's a few things you need to consider first. The primary one is, where will you regularly charge the car? So this is where the juice comes into your house. Now, will you need some kind of heavy-duty industrial wiring at a cost of thousands? Will your neighbour's lights dim when you plug in your electric car? Will the national grid experience a total meltdown, plunging thousands into darkness, all because of you and your electric car? The answer is quite simply no. Although you can charge your car from a standard 3-pin 13-amp socket, you should have a dedicated outlet fitted. For this car, if the battery is nearly flat, it's going to take about 8 hours to charge it. A long time. But what do most of us do for 8 hours at night? We sleep. A fully qualified electrician should install the charging point. In most cases, it will be quite straightforward. Also, if you don't have a garage but you have somewhere off the street to park your car, you can fit one of these waterproof recharge boxes. If you park your car on a street, then until you have one of these near your house or flat, that is a problem. However, there are people who use these on-street chargers regularly, and there's more and more of them springing up all the time. People who drive electric cars now all know this is what they want more of. This is a quick charger and it pumps 440 volts at 60 amps into your batteries, taking the car to 80% full in about 30 minutes. But of course if you arrive at the quick charger and your batteries are only say half full, it only takes about 15 minutes to take it up to 100%. These units are already being installed at motorway service areas and will mean longer journeys are very possible in an electric car. There are concerns that overuse of fast chargers can damage the battery. In my experience though, I only use them occasionally to do longer journeys and the consensus is that this won't significantly affect battery life. So currently, people with somewhere off the road to charge their car overnight are clearly at an advantage. There are lots of alternatives though. On-street charging is coming and there are plans for many thousands of on-street charging points in London alone. The map in this car shows all the charging points available and they are increasing all the time. As more and more electric cars hit the roads, the business opportunities for installing recharge points become obvious. Expect to see them popping up in shopping centres, multi-storey car parks and businesses near you. Another very important aspect of electric cars is not where you charge them, but when. The national grid is built to deal with the spikes in demand. When we all get home at the end of the day, turn on the telly, the kettle, the lights, the water heaters, boom, massive spike in demand. All the generators spinning like billy-ho. <sighs> then we all go to bed and demand very little. All that capacity is suddenly doing nothing. So that's why electricity generators are very happy about us plugging in electric cars at night. It helps level out the demand. So charging your car at night has several advantages. If you use the off-peak tariff, you pay a lot less per kilowatt hour than you would during the daytime. Now if you charge your car strictly between the hours of 11pm and 7am, then you'll pay about 8p per kilowatt hour, as opposed to 13p per kilowatt hour during the daytime. Not only that, with the latest cars, I can actually set the charging timer remotely using my mobile phone. And, while the car's still plugged in, I can set the heater to come on in the morning so the car's nice and warm and I'm ready to head off and it doesn't affect the battery range at all. Brilliant, isn't it? Night-night. Now, you might also want to think about where the power that charges your car comes from. The UK national grid is powered by a mixture of coal, gas, oil, nuclear and renewables like this. Now, critics of electric cars uh, tend to get very moody if you claim that your car is zero emissions. 
I mean, it can be very confusing. As you know, we measure traditional cars by the amount of gubbins that comes out of the exhaust. But this car doesn't have an exhaust. There's nothing coming out. But wait, shout the petrol lobby. What about all the smoke that comes out of the power stations? Well, it's a fair point. But even if you go all fair and decent and add up all the CO2 that's released generating 24 kilowatt hours of electricity, and that's how much electricity is in the batteries of this car, you are in effect only releasing 80 grams per kilometer from this car. But a traditional petrol or diesel car produces 100 to 150 grams per kilometer. And of course, that's conveniently not counting any CO2 that's released drilling, transporting and refining the petrol before it comes out of the nozzle at the filling station. Overall, the reduction in emissions is in the order of 40% or more. And as the power grid gets cleaner, then all the existing electric cars get cleaner with it. And there's another thing you can do to reduce the CO2 emissions from your car, and that is to make the electricity yourself. These solar panels produce a surprising amount of electricity even in the United Kingdom. I've only had them two months and they've already produced over 700 kilowatt hours. On a sunny day in midsummer, these solar panels can recharge the 24 kilowatt hour battery in the car from flat to full. Nothing is burned to produce that electricity. If you discount the outlay of installing the panels, the cost is zero. A set of solar panels like these will have a lifespan of 25 years. Now, I've come to visit my friend Peter. He's a lovely bloke, Peter, and he's letting me top up while I visit his house. But just how safe is it to plug my car in next to Peter's toaster? Oh, warning. Unwind fully before use. Maximum current fully wound, 6 amps. Fully unwound, 13 amps. I better unwind it then. As long as the cable is fully unwound, it's quite safe to plug the car into a standard 13 amp household outlet. I wouldn't recommend using an extension cable except in an emergency. And never, never in the wet. So finally, your car is fully charged and you're on your way. But are there any tips on driving the car to get the maximum benefit from this amazing new technology? We all know how driving style can make a difference to how quickly you use the fuel in your regular car. Well, the same goes for an electric car. Driving as efficiently as possible allows you to get the most out of your charge and drive as far as possible. So smarter driving tips can be really useful in an EV anticipating the road ahead, avoiding unnecessary braking and accelerating can make you use less electricity and therefore drive further on a single charge. Make sure you're not carrying any extra weight. Take the buggy or the golf clubs out of the boot if you don't need them. Using the heating and cooling systems in an EV can use up the battery charge too, so only use them if you need them. Regenerative braking is a unique feature in an electric car. The braking system also harnesses energy and puts it back into the battery. So if you do this well, it means you can drive even further on a single charge. Basically, some of the energy used to make the car move can be regained as the car slows down. The Energy Saving Trust teaches smarter driving in electric cars for new EV buyers. The first drivers to complete the training showed a reduction on average of 17% in energy consumption and a 20% improvement in range after training. You can learn more about smarter driving from the Energy Saving Trust website. So now it's up to you. There are some obvious benefits and some very clear drawbacks to using an electric car. Some of the drawbacks are very real and some of them have turned out to be myths. But the advantages are obvious and I feel very confident in predicting they will increase as the infrastructure to support these vehicles comes online. One thing is certain though, I've really started enjoying driving again.